Okay, you're recording. Okay, we're recording, and I'm uh, having my, well, I did my second chat. We had lunch with your husband, uh, whatever, a couple years ago before the plague here in Santa Barbara, and I reviewed your uh, first, was that your first CD? No, it wasn't. Um, it was my first full CD. Full CD, my work. Of music, yeah. dream, dream Vapors, and we're going we're yes. gonna kind of touch on that a little bit in a minute. But I, I'm speaking with Rain Worthington. American composer. You're where are you? I've, I've never be quite sure. Where are you? New York State? Up, upstate New York. Yeah. Upstate New York. Okay. Good. <laughs> upstate, I like with upstate. The, yeah, What's with the, the it's beautiful with the oh, deer yeah. and the turkeys, wild turkeys, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and it, it's just really beautiful. In other words, a perfect place to meditate. We'll talk about that. In a bit, okay. Anyway, Rain Worthington, and what I want to mention about Rain is, uh, is, and she and I, you know, we've had a little chat here uh, previously. But what I find so fascinating about your music, Rain, is that, as I've mentioned, ad nauseum <laughs> to you, um, this kind of deep. I love sub basement stuff. I like subtext. I love psychological mysticism, you know, I, I just love that. And this is the art, dance is, again, what I mean, the same visual art, everything. That's, so I really consider you a deep artist as a composer. And you are self-trained, and that is a high compliment, frankly, because I don't have the discipline hardly to get up and take a shower in the morning. You, 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 you decided you were going to learn the art of composition, including orchestral music that we're going to speak about. And that ain't easy, let alone coming up with the ideas. So I just want to make sure you're clear and everybody out there is clear that the greatest wonder of all, I think, is when people just jump off the cliff. If you get my <laughs> metaphor, that was, didn't come out right. Uh, <laughs> but something about taking that leap, that was better, uh, toward the other side. I mean, that, that, that's what's wonderful. And it's also very, very refreshing. And that's the, my preamble to start, starting to discuss your, uh, I guess, second major CD. Have I lost some order there? Am I okay? Um, it, it's it's uh, the second CD. It's it's a Navona Records release, 2022. So it's brand, pretty much brand new. Yeah, I know it's a compilation of of, record, of pieces recorded in earlier years and whatnot, and of your own compositions from uh, over a span of years. Uh, the, the CD is called Passages Through Time, the music of Rain Worthington. And it is, uh, I, I just want to read the titles of the pieces here because what grabbed me immediately, you know, I, I, I think I mentioned to you and, and others, I spend the whole day with you, okay? That's the only way I can do this is to just block everything off and spend the day with you. And and and, each, you. Of the, <laughs> and each of the composers that I that I try, and then, then I do the interview and then, Somehow I write the review. That's the hardest part. But but the, just as with your earlier CD, it's the titles of your pieces, and this includes chamber music, some wonderful chamber music, some chamber orchestral work, a, a, a cello chamber piece. I'll, we'll discuss all that later. But here are the titles of these pieces. They're your titles. Uh, Night Stream for two violins in 2011. Uh, within deep current for string orchestra 2020 we're going to talk about that year which we all remember Ugh. yeah uh balancing on the edge of shadows for violin and piano also from 220 what a beauty that's a beauty of a piece uh shadows of the wind for small orchestra resolves for solo cello i'm being dramatic for a very important reason you understand uh -huh. I hope you understand. These words are important. Uh, dreaming through fog for small orchestra from 2020 also. Uh, and then the last piece on this CD, In Passage for violin solos and string orchestra from 2015. And what I mean, uh, what I'm getting and at the, is... And the first one was full yeah. circle. Oh, did I miss that? I'm yes. sorry if I did. I think I did. Yeah, full circle for cello solo and small chamber and small orchestra from 2018. So what do we got there? Seven or eight? I can't remember. Huh, it was I only can't. two hours ago. Uh, eight. Yeah, eight pieces. But but what's so fascinating about and wonderful about this CD is I'm hearing your chamber music for the first time. Uh huh. Here, wonderful. 
I want to talk to you about your affinity. I have a feeling. I know we, you know, I know we're going to talk about that, about cello. Uh, but also these titles are important. Now I'm going to take us back a little bit, and then I promise we'll get onto the topic of this new CD, Passages Through Time. I want to have a look at, uh, I've mentioned a little bit about your, your biography, and I think this is enough that you, I don't know, what did, I mean, did, at some moment, did you just say, hey, I've had it with this, whatever that was, I'm going to become a composer. Tom, let's just d dwell on that for a second. What made you say, I'm going to become a composer? Um, well, I think we've talked about this a little bit, and and I have in other interviews, but I I think, um, you know, I had some strong early uh, memories of classical music from Fantasia and um, and um, my grandparents had a piano when I was so I was when I was three, you know. Um, that one? I the one huh? behind you, the one behind you. No, it looks like a program of no. this. <laughs> yeah, but I lived um, I lived with my grandparents for a while, and from like about one to five, and uh, they had a piano, and I would go out and kind of plunk in the morning before anyone woke up, um, and I mean I just remember that doing that but um i never um i never studied any music i never studied an instrument except uh in fifth grade i took a li uh, like half a year of violin or something that was it um i don't blame you a half a year is plenty <laughs> violin is so hard <laughs> yeah i know and fifth grade you know so it was just like you know choose an instrument, so I choose, chose violin, and that was the end of it. But um, when I was in my 20s, um, early 20s, I, uh, or mid-20s, actually, I, um, I stayed with someone who had, a, stayed with someone's family who had a grand piano, and um, I was alone in the house for a period of time and because of things going on with the family, and I sat down and played, started Plunking away, and it took me back to the uh, childhood experience of being three years old and just loving, you know, sitting down and playing, you know, piano. And so, so I decided I wanted to get a piano. And when I got back to Boston, where I was living, I got a piano at an antique store, and I brought it to New York. When I moved to New York, it was a beautiful old upright piano and um and i just continue making up things and that's how i got into doing music um i just love the sound of the piano and as i've said to, to people um i've said you know the only reason i could have there were two reasons i could get into music and one was that i unlike violin, which is very hard and you need a lot of technique to make a good sound. Piano is accessible. You don't need technique to make a good sound. It just sounds beautiful when you press a key. It's just that simple. And the other thing is that when I moved to New York, it was in the middle of the um, minimalist music movement. And so there was a lot of um, a lot of openness and acceptance mm. for all different styles of music and um and including repetitive and naive kind of very, you know very simple melodies and patterns and and stuff like that so i just happened to start performing in that scene um encouraged by friends who who uh, had heard some of my little pieces and um you know it it was just this 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 high energy very open very accepting time in new york um it was just a really sweet period um where uh, artists of all different media were supporting each other mm -hmm. and providing spaces so i had um my first concerts in in um a loft space in in uh, in Tribeca in New York, and it was you know, wonderful. From, from upstate to Tribeca, that's that's quite a journey. You know, from the from the farmlands to the great urban center, it's amazing. Uh, 
frankly. But I'm, I, well, I, 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 I kind of I did the startup stage. Oh, where where were you earlier then? Where what? In other words, what's I your kind of DNA route? I came to New York from Boston, where I was living, and that's where I brought my piano from. Um, but I uh, was born in Texas, and I grew up in West Virginia. My grandparents were in West Virginia, and um, I lived in Maryland most, a lot of my life. And then I lived in um, Nashville and Wisconsin, and uh, um I don't know, and and I guess Boston was the next thing, and uh, and then you, came to New York. Were you just a wanderer, or were you what, 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 what? Were you traveling with them? Were you an army brat, or were you a wanderer? Oh no, no, no! I was on my own, and I was just uh, hooking up with friends and people, and just living different places. Hey, it was yeah, it was you... like the you know it was the sixties, late sixties, early seventies. So my, I came my to happy Boston. Time, my happy time was Seattle during those years, as in it was just a huge, gigantic adventure. Because we were all young, remember? Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so and I then, was in Madison, Wisconsin for a while, and mm -hmm. and then Boston and Cambridge, and, and then came to New York City in the mid-70s um, when all this music and art was happening, and this, it was a really cool time. And this is all by way, in a, in a way, I want to read a little bit about, uh, from, from your, from, from the CD, your kind of bi biographical statement. Uh, Rain Worthington explores the mystery of instrumental music's ability to communicate the universality of human experiences. Now, that's a lovely phrase, but it means a whole lot when it's coming from you at the levels you're coming from. So it's, uh, she invites the listener into the realm of the nonverbal to reveal our primal commonality. Uniquely uh, help among classical composers, Rain Worthington, as we mentioned, discovered his voice as a composer and learned her art autodidactically uh, and so forth. Uh, but I, I, the reason I want to go there is because you gave us a, a, a little bit of a, a story. Thanks, thanks for that. I remember it also from, here, here's my, my plug, from our earlier video interview about Gene Vapors, which is at uh, uh, performingartsreview.net, and we'll link this interview, this review, with that interview, that uh, and, and review. But here's what I had to say, and again, as I told you earlier, it's not me just shooting off my mouth. It, it, I'm trying to get everybody to be clear as we take this journey with you on the new CD, okay? Here's what I said in my review, excuse me, of your CD from, I think, 2016, called yeah. Dream Vapors. Now, right away, that's what caught my attention from the get-go, and just like the, the the new title. You don't fool around. I mean, the CD is called Dream Vapors, and of course, it's after a specific piece on the CD, but that, that's just like advertising where we're going to go. Dream Vapors, folks, get ready. Okay, here's what I say about that CD. Just let, I'll just read a little bit, because it's exactly uh, what I experienced today, spending the day with your new CD. Her choice of dark, enigmatic, harmonic colors hints at lessons yet to be learned and leaves the listener pondering the composer's sound vocabulary in reverse order. Translucence, transparency, and when all is said and done, reflection. I, I think that ought to do it, but I mean, this, I, I'm, looking, I'm looking at that review I wrote, whatever, in 2016-17, and boy, that is, that, I'm really proud of my... <laughs> <laughs> of, my, of my figuring you out, I guess, something like that. Um, and, and you mentioned yourself just, just minutes ago, a couple minutes ago, this characteristic and where it comes from, minimalism, of uh, brief, repeated rhythm, rhythmic figures. That's kind of characteristic of you. When I say dark in terms of chromatic fragments and, 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 and tonalities, it's it's sub basement. I think I prefer that one. It's it's mystery. You you create just a a, a a soundscape of mystery as you tell us all. Okay, we're going down the rabbit hole and and into the next one. Can I get? And do you do you need to say anything in defense of yourself before I go on? No, Are no, you, no, no. Oh, okay. oh I, I I I would say though that when we say minimalism, uh, it's not. It's not um, the kind of more, um, it's not 
super repetitive. It's not a uh, mechanistic kind of, mm-hmm. yep. it's, yep. it's more a journey than, yeah. than oh, exactly. a, yeah. Good, a very good clarification. Uh, so, so uh, anyway, just that was that, that was my impression then of dream vapors, and now here we here we are with with passages through time. Uh, who knows what the next CD is going to be called? I can't wait. Uh, but but that's it. So so we we kind of got started. Thank you for that little uh, you know when I was a youth thing, because it, because it's really important somehow. It and you made it very clear that at some point you made another connection, kinetic connection to a piano. And it took you instantly back to the age of three or four or five or whatever. That's what your music is all about. Mm-hmm. A kinetic sound connection to uh-huh. past memories, past dreams, uh, subconscious feelings, emotions, drifts, all of them. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, so, uh, so it's not a stupid question I'm about to ask you. And I hope it's not redundant. People ask you this question, I'm sure, a hundred times. But I, I have a serious reason for this. I want to know about your process, as they call it. Uh, when you and, and the reason I want to know that is because, as I mentioned to you off camera, I have a composer friend who really, who, whose music also is very, uh, very, very complex, very, very, very mystical. And, 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 and he t- has told me that he does go into a place. He goes some his he just loses loses his mind and and lets something else take control of his uh, writing at the keyboard. Am I going to pry too closely to ask you if there if not you don't have to imitate that? But I mean, is there anything there? You mentioned in one of your program notes on this new CD something about I've kind of forgotten it, but something about kind of moving into it, letting yourself move into a, a, a mindset or something. Can you talk about that hideously generic and general question it is it, it's um you know it's a mystery it's a very much a mystery to me i don't start with any architectural kind of uh plan for the music or anything um i don't know what leads me um uh i don't know what leads me into beginning a piece um sometimes it can be a uh kind of um you know, I, I re- it's really hard to, to tell. Um, you know, it, it just, uh, sometimes it can be a couple of notes and it'll just start taking me. You know, it just, um, a lot of people talk about this. A lot of, um, you know, creative people talk about going into a zone, you know, and um, it, it's like you're channeling something, but you don't know where it comes from and and i i realized one way to talk about it to people um so that they kind of understand it a little bit better is like to think of a visual artist um who is not doing not using a model of something like like not doing a still life or something but just approaching a blank canvas and doing an abstract painting um or or just a painting that's not based on uh, a literal representation of uh, you know he's they're not working off something in front of them. They just approach the canvas and they start uh, drawing a line or or applying a, a a a spot of color here or a spot of color there and and it just starts it just starts evolving. You know, perfect description and analogy. It's a beautiful analogy. Yeah, it's a really good analogy because I think people can have a better understanding of of doing that visually than doing it musically. But for me, it happens musically. You know, I st- uh, I think uh, I think um, when I start a piece of music and and begin with some notes and stuff. There's a certain kind of thing that happens like with a visual artist that that one thing leads to another. And it's really important to me that the music makes sense and that it, it has a journey and it, it does go through this kind of process of, of one section leading into another. And I don't know where the where the next section comes from or or where that how that path develops. 
but it just starts developing organically. If the piece is working, you know, uh, really well organically, it happens pretty quickly. But uh, sometimes you go back to it and you're stuck and it doesn't move. But when it starts moving again, you know, and that's what it is. It's, it's, it's like moving, you know. When it starts moving, it moves. Ah, you know? That was damn. That was damn good. Uh, that, I think that pretty well. <laughs> pretty well. And so you you described beautifully. The, uh, do I presume that piano is kind of the tinkering medium when you're sitting down? And it's, I'm, let's look at two two uh, at twenty twenty because there are three or four pieces on here. We don't need to go to them specifically just now. But I'm talking about here. Let me tell you what I did in twenty twenty. I was alone with my cat, and I stared out the window. And asked myself, what the hell is going on for about 14 months? I mean, I did nothing. I was in paralysis. What happened to you in 2020 and how is it reflected? Then we can maybe touch on a couple of these beautiful pieces that you wrote in 2020. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was, we were all kind of in, you know, I mean, in the beginning, it was just uh, shock because I, I don't know whether you know this, but um, in the well, in the beginning of 2020, I got a commission from Audrey Wright, who's the co uh, associate concert master uh, of the Baltimore Symphony. She's a, a wonderful violinist, and I saw she this on Facebook on your face. On a lot of these, I think I seem to recall stuff on Facebook about this commission. Uh, you know that either you put up or they put up. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, so Audrey commissioned me through Parma Recordings to write a, a, a piece for violin and piano, which is Balancing on the Edge of Shadows. So that came at the beginning of, um, just at the turn of the year, the beginning when we were just beginning to hear rumors about a global pa pandemic mm. and kind of thinking, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. um, and then... Um, a wonderful thing happened, um, was, had been scheduled, was a premiere, uh, not a premiere, but a performance at uh, Carnegie. Um, so I had a piece played at Carnegie at the big hall uh, as part of DCINY um, concert Tell programming me. there. And the Tell piece was DC, called Still Tell Motion. Us what, Tell us what DC... Huh? What, tell us what the initials mean. Um, it's, distinct, it's Distinguished Concerts International New York. And um, they put on uh, a series of concerts, a lot of choral music and um, a lot of vocal music and guest uh, conductors put together programs. And so that happened to be um, uh, Miran Vapotic, who had, who had recorded some of my music with Parma, uh, had put together a program. Unfortunately, he was he he wasn't able to get to the concert to conduct it because of visa issues and the and COVID. Um, yeah, it, in Europe it was starting to shut down, and so um, they had a guest. Uh, they had a substitute conductor fill in at the last minute. But anyway, this performance happened on February sixteenth. Um, and then I went home, and then I went to the um, uh, 2D Festival at Denison University, which was a fantastic experience, and had orchestra piece played there, uh, yet still night. Came back to New York, um, like March 5th, um, did, participated in a little event in New York, and it was a seminar or, or a chat or something, right? I'm trying to remember all this. I think that's, I'm, you're, I'm with you on most of what you're describing. Wasn't it sort of a little seminar or something? That was that's when I whenever we all got shut down or something. You were about to. It, it was a it was a New York women composers uh, fundraising gala, and um, anyway, what what was happening is as soon as I left the place, it was like shutting down. It was like boom, 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 doors closing behind me. I felt like I was running through this <laughs> this maze kind of with doors closing behind me. And so when we got back to uh, upstate New York, it was March 9th. And then on March 15th, I think, 
New York shut down. Mm -hmm. Everything shut down. In my case, it was the hundredth. In my case, it was the hundredth anniversary of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, a huge gala concert in Santa Barbara, at the museum. The whole thing, and we thought it was all kind of amusing, and we were, you know, white, you know, black tie, the whole schlemiel. A few days later, bam, everything shut down. Yeah, it was amazing. And so therefore, I'm, I've pulled it up. So I was I wanted very to lucky that oh. uh, I that the. Yeah. Carnegie concert happened before, because mm -hmm. otherwise it wouldn't have happened, and it was such a wonderful experience, you know. But um, you know, it was it, so so so. What you were saying is like so. What happened? So then, it's kind of it was taking hold. The realization was taking hold. The scariness of it was taking hold, and the news of the New York was on fire with COVID. Uh, it was just, it was just unbelievable, unbelievable. And um, so that was kind of months of just hunkering down and trying to stay safe and, and just watching the world burn kind of, mm -hmm. you know, not just America, but globally, you know, I mean, it was yeah, just it, incredible. At least it stopped. The world definitely stopped, and I will never forget seeing those dolphins exploring the Venice canals. So there's a good side to it as well. <laughs> By yeah. the way, I'm at Balancing on the Edge of Shadows for Violin and Piano, 2020. Everybody, we've been talking about that particular piece. It's on this new CD um, uh, with Audrey Wright Violin and Yundu Wang Piano in this case. Here's your quote. It evolved to be quite beautiful, mysterious with delicate subtlety. There is also an element of suspense as if balancing on an edge between dark and light, aware of an ominous potential of darkness." End quote. The play. Yeah. <laughs> the play. Yeah. That's what that piece is. And I'm in my little notes, you know, that, that I'll put into the review. Um, the, the, this really is a, is a uh, beauty. This really is a beauty um, uh, of a piece. And you write, write so very well for violin, so I want to go up to another 2020 piece. Oh, there's uh, my segues are, are turning out better than I fantasized about. Hang on. Oh, maybe I didn't pull this off. People, hold it. The two uh, violin piece. Yeah, here we go. Uh, well, that's from 2011, so it's an earlier piece. But yeah. speaking of of your violin writing, uh, this is on on the new CD. Night stream. Um, did I get that right? Am I spelling? It, is it night stream or might? Must be night stream. Yeah. Yeah, Night's Dream. I missed my spelling. The Night's Dream for two violins from 2011. So we're going back. We're going back to kind of the beginning, really. Well, not really, but kind of. Is, is, does that, is 2011 kind of the beginning of things in, compositionally for you? Where does this fit into your oeuvre? Where does uh, Night's Dream fit into your oeuvre from 2011? I love that word. Um. It, it, it's like I started writing orchestra works in 2000. Um, the first orchestra works were like 1999 and 2000. Um, and uh, I was writing, uh, but I, uh, it kind of, so so it kind of fits in the middle right okay. now, I guess. And was, it, uh, was this the beginning of uh, one of the first chamber music pieces, this piece for two violins? Do you remember? Um, no, it wasn't. It was, um, but I hadn't done um, I hadn't done a a, du a duet with two violins. That was the first duet of two violins. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> a violin duet. That was the yeah. first time I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to. Here's what I, here's what you write about Night Stream for two violins in 2011. Quote. Reflecting on the flow of life and time, imagined impressionistically as light streaming across Rain Street windows on a late night taxi ride through city streets, end quote. You see why I want you to talk about these? I mean, that's like a, a masterpiece of of your own imagination and how you see the piece. I can't quite remember how I saw it, and I wasn't really looking for raindrops dripping off a taxi window, but you see what I mean? What I mean, everybody, and I, she knows, but I want you all to know. 
this imaginative uh, mind and how you, uh, Rain, take that imagination and make it into sound. So I think it's, yeah. it's brilliant. But, but I, I guess, wonder, you know, guess it's, it's really, I mean, uh, I, I was I was setting up the image of a, a, a rain streaming kind of at an angle, like you're traveling yeah. somewhere. Everybody and can so, see that in their mind. Yeah, and so it's it's more about it's more about being in a being in a space that's moving forward, you know. Mm -hmm. And as it's moving forward, it's like your your life is kind of uh, you know kind of flowing by, you know, as you're thinking about it and remembering it, or but not literally remembering it, just kind of um, existentially just being in the moment of like feeling the flow of life. Um, so it, 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 the night streams are like the, <laughs> the flow of life. I don't wow. know. I mean, sometimes, it, you know, if you're alone and in a taxi at, late at night, going home alone and just kind of feeling life. It's, it's so New York and it's so uh, uh, film noir and it's so <laughs> New York City and it's so, it's a good thing you didn't become a film director. That's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, Why? <laughs> but I want to let's let's kind of dwell a little bit. Like that's how I'm trying to piece it together in 2020. That was my little bit of mistake. So we went back a little bit to 11. But let's try. Where is that other one? Okay. Oh, so uh, with, so um, oh, with yeah. deep currents was 2020. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this 2020. Is, this is a big a big orchestral piece uh, performed by the Janáček Philharmonic within deep currents for string orchestra. Uh, from two, uh, 2020, quote, and when I say quote, it's you, okay? You're just helping us, okay? Con yeah. Conveyed some of the feelings I have had during this epic time of global pandemic, being slowly pulled along by underlying currents, which kind of also is sort of that metaphor of being in the taxi, you know, yeah. moving through time and, and psyche, really, and space and so on. Um, tell us a little bit about this one from 2020. It's, it's, don't want to exhaust the year, but still. Well, it's kind of um, like you, like you, like the program note says, it's it's being pulled. Um, th by the way, this is why my album is called Passages Through Time, because all of the, a lot of this music is about the journey through time. You know, the psychic journey through through time, a period of time, or just being in in life and um and um this was at a point this was done in may 2020 so it was kind of as things were shifting a lot you know um our understanding of the pandemic was shifting the the news was changing the the rate of uh deaths and and serious uh, you know deaths um from the pandemic was changing and so you're you're still being pulled along by this kind of full force current of the pandemic, but at the same time, you know, you're getting all these other things that are leading you in different directions in a way, because now you have more information going this way and more information going that way. And and it's not literal, but it's it's how it plays on your emotions. You know, yeah, beautiful. how it, beautiful. How it's and that's what you just on. exactly described what was going on around there in May 2020, uh, 2020, not to be redundant about you, but you helped me to remember that that's when, this, you know, some were saying it was going to be easy, that some were saying it could be hard, then there was the second wave. In other words, being pulled in all kinds of directions, but also right, being right. pulled inexorably into this deep black hole, really. I mean, we had no right. one had any idea. Yeah, a lot of people at that time were saying in the summer it was going to start dissipating because people would be outside again, and summer is not a uh, traditionally a, a a big flu season. So they were thinking that it was going to act kind of like flu, and um, a lot of people were saying it's going to decline a lot in the summer. It didn't, you know. Also, I'm just uh, just about this piece and your technique. I I, I hear it on this CD. Uh, this idea of sliding, uh, uh, sliding pitches. 
You know what I mean? Um, like yeah. that kind of like, oh, hey, that sounds pretty cool, or what? I mean, because all of a sudden I'm hearing sliding pitches. Uh, yeah, sliding pitches, like in the string, you know, chili and such. Yeah. But yeah. How, how, what? And does that uh, if affect that affect um, represent something to you about this slippery slide? Not, if it not was specifically, cool. just just kind of part of the emotion of it, like mm, you know, uh, like <laughs> you know, I can't perfect. I can't explain it. It's just part of the emotion of it. At some point, I it just came like that's that's what comes next. So, and this is interesting, I think, in terms of titles. Within deep currents, balancing on the edge of shadows. Two distinct different pieces, both from 2020, and just the titles alone sync, if you will. Now, this just came to me. It was not a gift from God or anything, but it, but this is so interesting. Within deep currents, that was the time, balancing on the edge of shadows, as in we had no idea what was coming next. I'm combining those two uh, titles both from 2020. Well, were you in any, were you in some kind of funk or what? Were you just living at home too with your hus husband, as I recall, uh, and just hanging out in the, in the North woods uh, with nothing to do, but right. And, and deal with what was going on and, and yeah. try to just, you know, I tell you when it first, when it first started for me, I thought, ah, at last I can get caught up on reviews. I needed to get caught up on. I thought, this is great. It's like a, a vacation. Uh, and of course, nothing of the kind, because my mind, all of our minds were just a mess. The psych yeah. psychological damage. It's going to be, you know, many more years before we really understand how this, this thing yeah. that yeah. made the world stand still, literally. That's yeah. an amazing experience. Anyway, so, anyway. Um, let's see now. Let me and know, and Dan, things. I just want to yeah. say that one thing also that was happening with a lot of us is that um, it was kind of the same experience I had after 9-11, you know, of living in New York City. And, and um, there was right after 9-11, people in New York, all over New York, and probably all over the country, because people were coming to New York to help. Everybody wanted to help. Everybody wanted to be able to do something to help people, to make it better. And in 9-11, you could go, it, there wasn't much to do in terms of, you know, the rescue, but, um, you know, you, you, you could go out and you could go out onto the streets and connect with people and at least mm -hmm. try to figure out what to do to help the pandemic had that feeling of like, you want to help, you want to do something, you want to be, you know, um, but it was just the opposite. You couldn't go out, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't connect with people. Yeah. It was, it was just so bizarre because you had all these feelings still of wanting to reach out. And, and I do know that conversations were happening more deeply on, and, and I think people in the beginning were connecting more on the phone and through zoom and stuff like that more deeply than, than uh, had been, you know, I, I know I was connecting with people that I hadn't really had long conversations with before for for quite a while but all I'm trying the to remember, I guess in my case it was pretty much just the computer communications but as I recall yeah. it, there wasn't yeah. even much of that in other words most of the people around me were also kind of in shock just you know staring out the window as I said literally I just would stare out onto the empty streets even of little Santa Barbara uh, and just you know it was like a sci-fi flick or something um, yeah, yeah. You know, but the, okay, but I, here, here we go. I'll get over my 2020 obsession in a second. Uh, but but it's very very important on this new CD, these 2020 pieces, because you know what? The sen I'm, remember I made a, a sentence of two of those 2020 works a minute ago. The third piece of yours from 2020, Dreaming Through Fog. I'll say we just finished talking about it. We all were kind of dreaming through a fog for small orchestra from 2020. This, in this case, with the Janacek uh, Philharmonic, quote, quote the composer, 
not never more, but anyway, uh, quote the composer, composed during the time of the global 2020 coronavirus pandemic as a reflection on the seeming warping of time. And that's what I think I've been describing also. Time just warped. I mean, weeks went by and I was staring out the window. Um, a continuous undercurrent of tragedy and uncertainty. Uh, and then we'll move on to happy yourself. But I mean, that's that's amazing too. Again, for small chamber orchestra from 2020. What do you want to, uh, do you have anything you want to mention about it? Um, no? Well, you know? that was a really hard piece to write, um, mm. but really necessary for me to write. And I love that piece. But, you know, writing that, I just, I, I was, um, the opening of that just starts drawing me into this, this, um, I, I think in, at some point in the program notes, I talk about like being drawn through a tunnel, um, you know, with outside, uh, occasional outside uh, intrusions, you know, into the space of audio and oral intrusions, but that are kind of disjointed and, and remote. But, um, you know, that that was done in September 2020, and, um, you know, uh, th at that time, there was starting to be a resurgence again of the pandemic, and there was just such a sense of stasis, you know. I mean, nobody knew what to do, and everybody, I, I think everybody was just, we don't, it, this is like, this is going on and on and on, you know? So that piece just is my, I had to get that out, you know? I had to, I had to like go into that space and express it because, uh, you know, it just was so heavy, you know, um, that time. Even and you mentioned it, that you really love the beginning. And, here, and I say here in my notes today, I like the beginning as it builds from, well, uncertainty, question mark, whatever that means. I have no idea what I said, but that was kind of whatever the impressions were, is that, that opening of that, that this piece, uh, Dreaming Through Fog, uh, it presented to me psychologically. I mean, the, this is music for Psych 208, uh, but, <laughs> sorry. But it's it's like, you, t you just really take us on this, again, as I said, this uh, this journey, several journeys on this CD, but uh, that's interesting. Did I hear, I just have to ask the question, you're going to say, no, you're out of your mind, but sometimes I hear things. Did I hear flutter tongues on flute at some point, just briefly? Does that ring any bell? Probably. Because I, I, right, again, in that beginning, I, I, I wrote it down because I said, you know, was, was that flutter tongue? It was some kind of, it was an effect. It was just a beautiful effect made via flutter tongue, I think. Um, so yeah. I had to ask. Uh, and I feel like this, uh, this kind of, again, speaking of minimalism, if you will, in a much more generic sense in your case, but this simple sub motive is the way I describe it in that piece. There's always this, this um, well, talk about moving forward or slipping, slipping off the roof or whatever you want to, but this, go ahead, moving for this, uh, this sub motive. And uh, the orchestration is really good here, I thought. You know, your, your, your interesting colors and how you <clears throat> use use the orchestra. That was really good. Thank you. And Thank you. Percussive, rep repetitive, rhythmic figure that helps things move a bit more comes comes into the way. That kind of Any, anything you want to say about all that? Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, and there's a and it's not it, it's not an easy piece to play um, mm. because there the the some of the elements that are coming in. Uh, are disjointed. I mean, they're out of sync. They're the same motive, but they're out of sync with each other. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I just. Uh, um, it's a it's a goodie. It's a goodie. Uh, and I like the, uh, um, uh, the. Oh, at the very end, the use of timpani. What? Uh, the use of timpani at the very end. Very oh, yeah. distinct little passage for timpani. That I, I'm not sure what it was creating in my head, but I just remember thinking. Hmm. Nice oh yeah, yeah. There's a there's a strong passage of timpani in there, you know. That's kind of like just it's it's not a heartbeat. It's just, but it is it is a, you know in there uh, 
kind of ryth a rhythmic pulse of something, you know. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, exactly right. Kind and of a relent it, relentlessness. Yeah, exactly. Quite, quite right. That's that's what I like about it. That's what I like in general about little motives that are repeated. I mean, okay. as in, if you will, minimalism. Minimalism, because at a certain point you begin to hear something bigger and broader and deeper and stuff, even though it might be the same figure. Um, we're moving on. Okay. Oh, do you want to say anything else about it? Um, well, I don't know whether you're going to just segue into this, but, but um, you know, we're talking about these pieces and I'm talking about the circumstances of writing them, but, but really, as, as I think you said, you know, my music, and, and it says it in my bio, my music is about trying to describe things with, that are deep, that are primal, that are that, that are are <laughs> below a verbal level. You know that that somehow the language of music can describe these things, can touch on these things, not literally describe them, but touch on this kind of level of emotion that that. Um, that it's very hard to put into words, even though we're talking a lot about it. Um, you know, there's, and, and that's fascinating to me because, you know, they're just, I don't know how music does it, but it's pretty amazing. I mean, there are only so many notes in an, you know, 12 notes or other systems have more because of microtones, but, but music is a very limited system of tones, and um, and you can create all this emotion and and beauty and and mystery and all this stuff from such limited material. And 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 like we all know that I'm stumbling a little because I'm trying to put it into words. But we all know like minor keys tend to make people you know kind of evoke sadness mm -hmm. yeah you know but but it's so much deeper than that you know and and how music can evoke all these complex emotions that are very very deep you know um that aren't specific they're, they're it's without the spe specificity of language and um it's interesting cuz that's on a it's like this channel of of you know uh understanding you know that yeah, it's and just it's channel and it's channel and it's channel 24 sub basement and the, and you know as well as i do the answer as opposed to visual arts the, uh, music music's effect on the subconscious is it gets into the brain it goes directly into the head it there's no getting away you can turn away from a painting you can look away from dancers, from an intricate dance work, if you will. You don't have to read a novel, but when you hear sounds, those sounds are going deep into your head. Yeah, sure. and it and it and music is one of the uh, things that lasts through uh, loss of memory and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it's 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 through loss powerful, of speech. Powerful, powerful, yeah, powerful. It's powerful very, communicating with subconscious with the subconscious. Very powerful. And it you resides just, in a different place in the brain, yeah. you know. Oof. Makes you humble, doesn't it? Oh, all of us, yeah. really, because it's that power. It's that powerful a magic tone, this tonal yeah. thing, this sound, and the way it can get deep into the subconscious. Yeah. Hi. Are we going to get out of this thing? Okay. I want to talk about the your piece for solo cello from 2015 uh -huh. that is on the CD. It's called Resolved plural, resolved, uh, for cello solo from 2016, Carmine Miranda. Almost Carmine. Sounds, oh, Carmine, that'll help. Thank you. Because it almost, yeah, thank you. Carmine as opposed to Carmen Miranda. That was the, I'm sure she has to suffer the brunt of all those uh, jests. Uh, uh, but Carmine, thank you, Miranda, is the cellist, quote, by the, <laughs> you're going to hate me for this, quote, once again, from the composer, finding a sense of acceptance and inner strength. A reaffirmation of emotional resolve in life. That's what. That's how you describe describe resolve. Resolve.
resolving, as in resolves plural, um, the, these these inner, these uh, these uh, acceptances or denials and acceptance of inner strength, con reaffirmation of emotion, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and here, here's here's and then I'll let you yammer here, but <laughs> that's our word for the evening. Um, I, I say to myself for my notes coming up, uh, Rain has an affinity for cello. You do. There's something I love about. It. Well, and that has to be, that's kind of what the next part, is, as in, remember yourself trained as a composer and figuring out how instruments work, uh, you, you know, and, but you clearly have figured out, if you will, or received the message from cello. It's a beautiful uh, solo cello piece from 2016, quite lovely. It's interesting. Um, um, it, ha it, it, it um, uh, let's see, an uh, essence of the, com it, it, to, to me, it was kind of like an essence of the composer's meditation. Is it a meditative yeah. kind of tonality for you, this cello sound? Mm -hmm. it, it, it is kind of a meditative piece, and it's, and um, some of my pieces are almost like um, supplications or prayers, mm. you know, and this piece is kind of, uh, you get that feeling a little bit. It's it, it it's um it's uh, just uh, I can't explain it. But um, anyway, I, I this was the first piece I ever wrote for cello, and wow. um, and um, I wrote it and I had met Carmine in um, the Czech Republic. I was finishing a recording session with Parma of some orchestra pieces, I could think for Dream Vapors. And um, and Carmine was coming to the Czech Republic to uh, to do a recording with Parma of um, the D Dvorak uh, uh, Concerto. I think he was working wow. on that one and Schumann uh, Cello Concerto. Yeah, I think yeah. those two. Anyway, that was the CD he was working on, and so he came in as I was leaving, and we uh, we got to meet each other. I got to hear some of his session, and we got to hang out a little bit. And um, you know, so he was he's a real he's a master cellist, just incredible. And um, as is Audrey, um, the violinist who did uh, who commissioned the piece balancing for the edge uh, on the edge of shadows anyway Carmine um, so I got to know Carmine I, I got a request from someone a cellist at a, a conservatory to write a piece um, and so I wrote this piece but before sending it to the um, person who was requesting it I wanted to pass it by Carmine to see if it was playable and um, so I sent it to him, and I said, "Can you just take a quick look and see if this is playable, and if and if I, you know, or is it too awkward, or do I need to change anything?" Yep, very good, very you smart, know. very smart, very what? smart, very smart. You know, yeah. it's a, it's so a, hey, have a look he at said, this. he said um, it's playable. He didn't change anything. Um, I mean, he he plays it beautifully and you know and and every musician brings such incredible nuance and subtlety to any piece that anybody writes you know i mean that's part of the amazing thing about seeing your work brought to life by musicians mm -hmm. you know they just you have the notes on the paper but what they bring to it is just yeah in, you know that's it's like the such secret a, and the magic isn't it uh, people, uh, you know, it's just notes on paper, and some people just play notes on paper, and others bring it to life. Yeah, um, yeah. So he said it's playable, and um, I want to play it, and I'll do a demo recording for you. Oh. And, and, and which was so kind, so generous, and that demo recording is what's on the CD. I'll be damned. That, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that is amazing. That is yeah. the, the engineering and everything. That, well, I, I mean, I don't usually talk about engineering. I'm not an acoustic engineer, but it's just such a beautiful sound. So the, yeah. from that instrument, it, of yeah. course, it's him and it's it's his intuitive playing of this piece. But also, you know, this is no fooling around in the back bedroom. This is 
you know, this is right. this guy knows what he's right. doing in terms of the so, so I dedicated the piece to him, <laughs> and then I wrote another piece for the person in uh, oh. the cellist at the conservatory. Oh, are you in trouble yet? <laughs> No, 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 no. She didn't. She had never even seen the first piece. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I was just I was so honored that he wanted to play it. And, and when he sent me that demo recording, I just went, it was just it took my breath away, you know. And not only that, you got you got a double dip or something here. You got you got you submitted it to this wonderful marvelous professional cellist and he said oh i'll take that it's mine here's my recording of it and then you go oh whoops okay so i'll write a second piece for the other cello so you got two cello pieces out of it are we ever yes. going to hear a recording of that of the, the other cello piece cello solo piece it was recorded yeah where not not by the not by the conserv um oh. not it was performed at the conservatory and then a cellist, um, another a cellist, uh, recorded it on a CD. Um, uh, so, so anyway. Yeah. So it's it's in it's what it's in the it's archive. It's out on a CD. It's out on a CD. Uh, the other piece is out on a CD called uh, um, "Dancing on Glass" on Albany Records, and mm -hmm. it was uh, a CD that features string music by. Uh, by women composers, and it was uh, um, put together by this violinist Anna Cromwell. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's checking my mental notes. Did I ever chase her? I can't remember. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, uh, I think it's Anna Cromwell and Lisa Nelson are the uh, two violinists, and then Mira F Frisch is um, the cellist who did the. Uh, who recorded um, the second piece I wrote, which was called Then Again. Wow. So you really, I think you lucked out on that whole project, you know. Getting yeah, I did. Of it, really. <laughs> uh, very clever, very good. Very. It, it, was, and, and a, it wasn't an official, just to say, it wasn't an official commission. It was okay. a request, but it wasn't like somebody was paying me oh. and then I wrote a piece and then I gave it no, to someone else. Of course not. You'd never do anything shameful like no. that. I yeah, think we just have one last Make that piece very project. clear. Yeah, I think we have one last piece, correct me if I'm wrong, to have a look at on, on this uh, new CD, and then I'll kind of do a wind-up of, of things. It's uh, Shadows of the Wind, the small orchestra from 2000 uh, with the Janacek Philharmonic. Did we talk about it? I don't think so. Uh, no. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, quote, quote the composer, uh, the inspiration for this work came to me one night while listening to the sound of a windstorm as the wind increased and diminished in cycle, as if looking out from a perspective of a high place as shadows of time and memories, there you go again, travel in waves over a vast emotional landscape below. Yeah. Take me to my psychologist immediately. I mean, that is just an amazing <laughs> description of this piece by yourself. But it speaks again, that was my whole point from the very beginning about the deep, sub basement way that you look at things and how you express it through your music these these really profound and, and deep and complex uh, thoughts about time and the universe in this case a windy day if you will i heard it and i want to report i did hear windy forest uh, uh that descending bass line in the opening uh, is really interesting and then off it goes you know, uh, into a very well imagined idea of a windstorm hello uh and so forth uh, um what else do I have? And you again, you use these string slides, which are perfect to describe, you know, trees bending over or something, slipping uh -huh. this way and that, that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so it's wonderful. But a, a good use of but chamber not orchestra. literally. <laughs> Pardon? Not right. literally. Oh, okay. Schlepping? <laughs> no, I mean emotionally. It's all emotional. <laughs> okay. Ah. Just as I'm hearing trees blowing in the wind, you're telling me it's some deep side. I'm kidding. Uh, okay. uh, and also, you it's it's like, oh, she's discovered tuned sliding timpani. If I'm not mistaken, toward the end, there's that tuned, tuned timpani. Oh, no, it opens. Yeah, and, it, and the opening, and the, too. And in the opening, the opening, too, huh? Okay. Yeah. I'll catch that. Oh, yeah, tuned timpani slide. Uh, slide. Nice. Windy yeah, yeah. imagery, you know. Not, and not tu psychological. And tubular bells. 
Where? What? I missed Tubular that. Bell. Hmm, I'll have to re-listen. I, I think those are yeah. going um, Let's see. And I love the idea of the way the solo, the solo cello kind of kind of glues the segments together. It's a real narrative piece, if you will. Uh, yeah. Maybe even Beethovenian, if it were a windy, nasty day and he's out walking, you know what I mean, with his hands behind his head. Um, anyway, it's a beaut. What do you want to say about it? Um, <laughs> nothing much, <laughs> you know. It's a beauty. How's that? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, I love the way the cello comes in and out and, and kind of, you know, emerges at times and comes down. And and, and I have one, the other piece that has uh, a, a cello soloist is Full Circle, which opens the CD. So there are several oh, mm -hmm. yep. cello, cello related. Did we, did we talk about Full Circle or not? I can't, I can't quite, and, and orchestra from 2018. Yes, because yeah. I haven't yet mentioned the Moravian Philharmonic. Okay, but well, okay, so let's go up there and get that one done. Uh, the cello soloist is Petar Nozovsky. I hope I got many of their quotes. Uh, here, here's what I have to say. Wow, uh, really deep dives from the first bars into, quote, the composer, a contemplation of cycles of emotion that continually emerge and recede throughout life, end quote. Yeah. When are you going to just, you know, lay back and read a cheap novel? I, I ask. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell me about it. Now, full circuit with cello soloist and small orchestra, which again opens this uh, second CD, again yeah. from 2018. Um, I, I, um, again, I was, um, I, I, I passed it by Carmine to see if it was, worked okay and stuff Same he's been my go-to go advisor for cellist the cello music and stuff mm -hmm. um by the way i did i think before this piece i did rent a cello because mm -hmm. as you know i'm i'm not trained on it i don't play any instrument so i did i did want to get it's my hand well yeah but i'm not trained on it yeah it's okay. like <laughs> um so I did want to get my hands on a cello and just kind of get a sense of how, uh, you know, uh, fingers fit on it and the bowing and stuff like that. And um, it was really great to have a cello. I even played it enough to get calluses, you know, on my fingers a little I bit. Just you. Just fooling around. I wasn't taking lessons or anything. I was just trying things, you know. And the amazing thing is, um, I mean, what amazed me to have the instrument is to realize um, that the crossing strings, um, you can make these, the, you can uh, achieve these jumps in, in pitch ranges that on paper look impossible. Oh. But but on the cello, crossing the strings, if you're, if you're, you know, um, you can't see me, but if you're down real high right. on the, yeah. on yeah. the high string of the cello, mm -hmm. and you go to the next string over, just cross over to the next string, you're hitting a note that's way different from the high note you're on for the high string, you know? I mean, the... What I'm saying is that what uh, it was a real eye opener in terms of like what look what on paper looks impossible but isn't impo isn't hard at all. Yeah. Okay, you now know? let me tell you about my cello experience because it will dis exactly describe our two nights. The difference. You picked up a cello, had no idea, and you fooled with it and played with it, even got calluses. You had fun for so many, what, let's say, weeks even. You made discoveries. I picked up the cello for all the same reasons of, God, that sound is so gorgeous. I can just, you know, it can't be that hard. You stick it between your legs and you play it. Uh, and I gave up within days. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I couldn't get, because it was too hard. <laughs> well, you, you were trying to play something, right? Well, I had a fantasy that cello would might even be easier than some other instruments, and it's not, <laughs> you know, in the string so family. Were you, 
But were you trying to play a written piece? No, I was just trying to figure out how the cello worked because I was a conductor, remember? I'm supposed to know some of these things. And uh, But what I'm trying to say in a jestful manner is that you take some, something, you take everything, I'm speaking mysteriously with, with deliberation, and make something of it. I, on the other hand, am rather facile. I'll get ideas in my head. I'll soon discover it's way too difficult and move on. That's all. Oh, it's a well, I, I fell in. Well, I fell in love with the sound of it, the sound of the cello. Even even though I couldn't make anything like what Carmine can make in terms of tone, I I still fell in love with the sound of the cello. I wish and, I had, uh, had learned cello from an early age. I wish that had been the choice because it is. I'm sure every cellist will say, you know, you just fall in love with this thing. Yeah, yeah. And the tone, and, you know, the way you can even begin to use vibrato, possibly a little bit earlier than with fiddle. Fiddle's just impossible. Fiddle, anything you hold under your, your chin is just craziness. Yeah, you I have, didn't get to the, I couldn't get the vibrato. I didn't even try that for a while. Yeah. Um, I think we'd better end it. How am I doing? Oh, yeah, we have to end it. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been having a great talk, as per our talk of whatever, four years ago, uh, with American composer Rain Worthington. And we're talking today about her 2022 Navona Records release called Passages Through Time, the music of Rain Worthington, uh, orchestral music, uh, chamber orchestra music, two fiddle piece, gorgeous, uh, a cello solo, I mean, just a, a very wide range covering, whatever, let's say 10, well, no, more than that, uh, 20 from 2000, covering a pretty nice little uh, uh, spotting of your career, really, from 2000 to whatever, 2020, 21. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful CD uh, with the Moravian Philharmonic, not a Czech Philharmonic, Croatian Chamber Orchestra, one, another one of those wonderful uh, uh, Novano, Novana, Nav Navona, excuse me, releases that kill me for that. Let's get it clear. It's another one of those wonderful Navona records releases uh, passes through time. Great pleasure. I, as everybody knows, this will go up on performingarsreview.net. I'll connect this interview and the review of this, your second big CD, with the earlier uh, uh, CD so that people can easily go back and forth as they visit and have a look at who you are and what your music sounds like. Okay. Uh, Rain, great pleasure. Yeah. Lots of fun. Lots yeah. of fun. Thank you. Yeah, it was such a pleasure. You make See. it so easy. Oh, good.